we're analyzing Atlassian stock ticker TEAM team to see if it's a great business on sale. This analysis is going to be intense, but it's going to be worth it. We're using the select six analysis to look at the most telling financial metrics before estimating a fair value for Atlassian. Then we're giving a final rating to the business. Before we get into these valuable metrics, let's understand Atlassian stock performance. Right now, Atlassian trades for $176.65 per share. Year to date, they're beating the market. Their stock price is up 40%. In the last five years, Atlassian's compounding at 19% annually. This is even with the company being cut in half from its all-time highs in November of 2021. Since being publicly listed seven and a half years ago, Atlassian stock has performed great. They're compounding at 28% annually. They're one of the top performers over this time frame. Atlassian still down $120 from its 52-week high. Atlassian's a little over $50 above their 52-week low. Around 2% of their shares are sold short. Atlassian's a big business. They have a $45 billion market cap. But the burning question is, why should we be paying close attention to Atlassian? Atlassian produces software that helps teams work together more efficiently and effectively. The company provides its Trello and Jira project planning and management softwares, collaboration tools, and IT help desk solutions. Atlassian operates in four segments, subscription, which includes term license and cloud agreements, maintenance, which is annual maintenance contracts that provide support and periodic updates. They're generally attached to perpetual license sales, perpetual license, which are upfront sales for indefinite usage of the software and other which include training strategic consulting and revenue from the atlassian marketplace app store atlassian was founded in 2002 and it's headquartered down under in sydney australia now with that understanding let's get into the numbers Starting with metric number one, we want Atlassian's average return on capital in their last five years to be above 14%. The average business earns about a 7% return on capital. Looking for a benchmark that's double this can build in margin of safety based on the quality of the business. Atlassian's returns on capital may suffer due to how this is calculated. They've had negative earnings as a public business, though they did have positive returns on capital in two of these years, in 2020 and 2021. These other years, their returns have been negative. Again, Again, this may have to do with some of the accounting and especially because this is a fast growing business. It's a software company that's aggressively reinvesting. Averaged out, Atlassian earns negative returns on capital in these last five fiscal years. Their returns on capital are negative today, meaning this is an X on metric number one. Uh. Metric number two, we're looking for growth. We want to see five-year revenue, net income, and free cash flow growth. We'll include their last 12 months worth of numbers in our calculations. All three need to be up for this to be a check. In this time, Atlassian has quadrupled revenues. They've had a strong growth trajectory through all five of these years. Their growth really accelerated due to lockdowns. As mentioned, their earnings are negative in all five years. We don't want to unfairly penalize the business, though. Atlassian, as a growing software company, has grown their gross profits, increasing these by nearly four times when we include today's numbers. They also maintain above an 80% gross profit margin. Lastly, Atlassian's free cash flows have nearly tripled over this time. Great to see their growth in their revenues, free cash flows, and gross profits. However, because their net incomes are down, this is an X on metric number two. Again, we're more looking at our standard metrics. This could be a little bit unfair given Atlassian's situation. Metric number three, we're looking for earnings per share growth in the last five years. Atlassian has negative earnings. We're looking for decreasing shares outstanding. However, that has not been the case for Atlassian. Similar to a lot of other growing software companies, Atlassian issues a good amount of stock. They've diluted shareholders by about 11% in their last five years alone. This is an X on metric number three, as shareholders have owned less of the business over this time. Atlassian's had a seemingly rough go of things so far. Can they turn it around in the second half of our analysis? Metric number four, we're looking for free cash flow per share growth in the last five years. This is where Atlassian's going to start to shine. They've grown their free cash flow strongly. That outpaces their shareholder dilution. Atlassian's grown their free cash flows per share. Metric number four is our first check of the day. So far through our first four metrics, we have one check and three X's. 
During recessions, it's overly levered businesses that can have the greatest losses. Metric number five, we want Atlassian's net debt, which is their total debt minus their cash and their short-term investments, to be below the sum of their free cash flows in their last five years. Atlassian's had negative net debt in all five of these years, meaning they have cash left over on their balance sheet after paying off their debt. Right now, they're sitting on about a $700 million cash cushion. They ended last year with just under $200 million. In all five of these years, Atlassian's also generated positive free cash flows. That's great for this business. It set Atlassian apart from a lot of other high-flying stocks. They've grown their free cash flows in all five of these years. These have even grown today from the end of their last fiscal year. In this time, Atlassian's produced $2.9 billion of free cash flow. This is a big check on metric number five. Not only does Atlassian generate free cash flow, they also have a cash cushion on their balance sheet. It seems like they're in a strong financial position. The big metric of them all, metric number six, we want Atlassian's average five-year free cash flow divided by their enterprise value to give us a yield that's above 5%. If this is the case, this gives a slight risk premium to the yield of the 10-year treasury. It's the first of two different ways we're estimating Atlassian's fair value. Right now, Atlassian has a $45 billion enterprise value. This looks at the company similar to it being a private business. Enterprise value accounts for both market cap and net debt position. We learned in the last five years, they've generated $2.9 billion dollars of free cash flow, meaning they generate around $570 million of free cash flow in an average year. When that's divided by their enterprise value, we get a 1.3% average free cash flow to enterprise value yield. On a current basis, Atlassian produced $824 million of free cash flow in their last 12 months. When that's divided by their $45 billion enterprise value, it gives us a 1.8% current free cash flow to enterprise value yield. These are both coming in below the risk premium we're looking for, they're less than half the yield of the 10-year treasury. This means for Atlassian on metric number six, this is an X. Don't just throw the business out. We still need to estimate their fair value per share and give our final rating. Everything we've discussed so far is important, but there's something missing that in my opinion is the main reason to analyze Atlassian, which takes us on to using a discounted cash flow model to estimate their fair value per share. A DCF model is based on the predictability of a company's free cash flows. Like any model in any discipline, its outputs are sensitive to its inputs. Atlassian doesn't have that long of a track record as a public business, clocking in at just seven and a half years. They've also been a fast growing business. This has lowered their business predictability. Starting with an average of Atlassian last three fiscal years worth of free cash flow. We're using historical assumptions to grow these into the future. It's up to you to figure out if these will be accurate or not for Atlassian. Assuming they grow their average three-year free cash flows at 20% annually for the next decade, then in the following 10 years, assuming this growth rate is cut in half and these free cash flows grow at 10% annually, we're not adding in their tangible book value as that's skewed based off how some of the accounting is done for the business. Keep that in mind. If we want a 15% rate of return, which is what Warren Buffett looks for, from his investments. If today's valuation multiples are the same 20 years into the future, an estimate of Atlassian's fair value per share is around $71.5. That's down less than half from their current stock price. Keep some key points in mind. Atlassian's low degree of business predictability means that this is a ballpark estimate. It doesn't lend itself to exact precision. Values a range, not a precise number. Most importantly, this analysis is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. Consult with your financial advisor before making any investment decision. In just a minute, we'll give our final rating to Atlassian. But we need to address something first. We've covered the numbers, but the qualitative factors may be even more important for Atlassian's business. What are they? Well, let's find out. Starting with the factors supporting a long thesis, Number one, because Atlassian has no sales force, its sales and marketing expenses are significantly lower than peers, driving already solid margins and allowing for material expansion. Number two, the company is disruptive to existing markets, especially to legacy software providers. Additionally, Jira Service Desk has dramatically expanded the addressable market beyond the IT function. Number three, Atlassian's growth has been strong and it's expected to remain so, with robust new client ads, client retention, upselling, and the introduction of new solutions. But it wouldn't be fair if we didn't cover the negatives of the business as well. Looking at the factors supporting a short thesis, number one, Atlassian can be viewed as a tools company, with the risk being that when the underlying language or techniques supported by Jira move out of favor, Jira itself may fall out of favor. Number two, despite generating more than $1 billion in revenue, the company's still not generating positive operating margins, and it's not expected to do so for a couple of years. 
Number three, Atlassian has traded at lofty valuations at times, and while it might continue to generate strong growth, the company may fail to live up to the optimistic assumptions that are sometimes embedded in the share price. They also announced a 500 employee layoff in the spring of 2023. There you have it for a balanced perspective of some of the qualitative factors of Atlassian's business. Now it's time to give our rating. In analyzing Atlassian's stock ticker team, we learned this is a fast-growing software company that's generated free cash flows in all five of the last fiscal years. Their revenues and free cash flows have grown by a lot. They also have very high gross profits due to how the business is structured without a dedicated sales force. Atlassian has diluted shareholders. Right now, the company has a cash cushion and they're generating free cash flow, so it seems they have a strong financial position. It's worth reiterating this analysis is not financial advice. Atlassian's free cash flow to enterprise value yields don't look attractive compared to the yield of the 10-year treasury. When we performed our discounted cash flow analysis, if today's valuations are the same in 20 years, you believe those assumptions and you want a 15% rate of return, an estimate of Atlassian's fair value per share is around $71.5. Atlassian last traded at those levels in November of 2018, you need to be patient. Looking at all the factors of our analysis, Atlassian looks like a moderate candidate for further research. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to like it, subscribe to the channel for more stock analysis videos, share your thoughts about Atlassian, and let me know what business to look at next in the comments below. Thanks for learning about Atlassian with me, and have a great day.